this bad boy is slain back from hell by Wolf Brew Games, a Kickstarter project that was released 24th of March 2016 under the name of Slain, which was panned. Uh, the Metacritic score for it shows 40 out of 100. But frankly, I don't care why, because this one, the Back From Hell edition, which is the only one you can buy at the moment, of course, is pretty darn good. You can probably guess that I'm going to praise it as a one of those audiovisual masterpieces, and you'd be right. It looks and sounds gorgeous. As you can see, it relies heavily on that modern retro look, and on top of that, it utilizes a, well, <laughs> an amazing soundtrack composed by one Kurt Victor Bryant behind the guitar and bass parts on Celtic Frost's Cold Lake album. He'd be this guy right here. And as for the album, it's okay. Ugh, en enough of that. Back to the game. The plot is obtuse, but a game needs one after all. You're a, well, a man-sword guy who wakes up to save the world by killing the bad man. Of course, it's never that simple. So, you get to fight the villain only after you hack and slash your way through linear levels with different themes, areas and musics. And frankly, they're all gorgeous, and they sound great. The tutorial sets the stage brilliantly. It's just kind of drops you in, tells you how to do stuff, and let's go off your hand. As you can guess, it's one of those difficult platformers. There's some relatively hard jumping going on, but the bulk of the pain the game deals out comes through the enemy encounters. They're all very simple on paper. They're either these close-range enemies, or projectile enemies, or both, or bigger variants of both of those. The actual difficulty they offer is through the animation sets, curiously enough. You see, the game's combat really boils down to parrying and counter-attacking mechanics. If you block the enemy's attack at the right time, instead of reducing the damage taken, it negates it completely and gives you this moment to perform a killer counter-attack which, thanks to the devil, sounds and looks simply awesome. It still hasn't gotten old for me, so they got that element right, which is very much crucial, because you'll have to master the mechanic and pull it off hundreds of times to ease the amount of, well, deaths the game deals as you make your way towards the end. But sometimes the parry isn't enough, and that's where the mana projectiles come in. Predictably, Below your health you have the mana bar. You hit the button and it throws out a nice little magic bullet. Hold it for a little while and it shoots out a bigger one. Crouch and hold it down and there'll be a little blast that clears out weaker enemies on the screen completely. On top of all that, there are weapon infusions, kind of elemental damage types that you can use as kind of alternate weapons. There's the normal one and fire and ice and they all deal different types of damage, which, of course, you have to use to exploit enemy weaknesses. And the last trick to abuse is the charged attack. Similar to the projectile, just hold down the attack button and release it at the right time for a bit of a lunge that deals roughly below the repost's amount of damage. It's very handy when you've died a dozen times and you know where the enemy will spawn so you can kind of run up to them and charge the attack before they spawn for that extra bit of damage. The main hook of the gameplay comes from the enemy encounters between checkpoints. You'll never have to do a lot of walking back to the spot where you died, but initially you will be doing a lot of it, as the enemy attack timings and animation sets can be difficult to learn. Also, there's only a handful of health restoring items throughout the whole game, so they could be considered as proxy checkpoints after harder encounters to refuel you for the next one, after which you might have earned the actual checkpoint. The stages themselves aren't really too different from one another, but the graphics help with this immensely. Even some of the enemies are palette swaps, with slight tweaks in their mechanics to keep it fresh, and to use the infamous quote, it just works. It's those graphics that, for me at least, make the stages very memorable, 
as the bulk of the actual gameplay design boils down to avoiding traps and beating enemies, fighting through a gauntlet to get to a checkpoint, rinse and repeat, with the occasional bit of platforming thrown in the mix. A special shoutout goes to the wolf themed stage with an amazing chase sequence. I found it very memorable as it was one of the rare occasions where the game breaks the pacing by shuffling the deck by having these kind of, well, special encounters. Of course in a game like this the stage finales come in the form of boss battles. Once again they look amazing and the soundtrack really gets you going, but once you've played through the game and start thinking a little deeper into it, they are either parrying fests, projectile reflection based bosses or a mix of both. All of them have some sort of characteristics going on, but gameplay wise it gets a little similar. You'll probably die a good handful of times as you try to learn the timing for all their attacks, but it's only a short jog from the checkpoint before you get to try your hand again. And it takes some weight away from the fights when you can just frankly bang your head against them again and again until you get through them either by learning and adapting or by the final stroke of luck. As expected, the final boss luckily deviates from this mode. It's something I don't want to spoil, but it is very memorable. One final thing I'd like to point out is this misconception in this game. It's not the game's fault whatsoever, but people seem to throw around the buzzword of a genre, Metroidvania, even with this game's case. And <laughs> it's like false advertising. These levels, they're all linear, and the only revisits to the older stages you can do, or you will do, are completely optional. There's no upgrades to jumping height or anything like that. You'll get the weapon variants so you can cut shit apart, but that's it. It's just something to keep in mind. Either way, that's just my thoughts on slaying back from hell. And to summarize, do I like it? Absolutely. It's one of the few games that I revisit for the sake of achievements, like beating bosses without taking damage and so on. Is it worth buying? I'd definitely recommend it if it looks appealing. Never before have I seen a game where at least an arbitrary third of the defining experience comes through the looks and sounds. That's not to say that the gameplay is bad, because it really isn't. It just might get old to some. The question just is how quickly it might happen. Is there anything else worth mentioning? Actually, yeah. The team behind the game is working on a new game by the name of Val Faris, which looks to be similar to Slain, except in space, with guns and many many improvements on the formula. Kurt of Cold Lake is doing the soundtrack for that one as well. I know I'm looking forward to playing it. But for now, thanks for watching and hey, listen you fucking posers, keep the metal metal or leave the hall, okay? Bye-bye.